Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, Brian Gerrish, who's talking about Common Purpose. I'd just like to say if Common Purpose would like a right to reply at some future time, I'm very happy to offer it to them. Uh, Brian, I'm going to read you a couple of quick texts here. Frank Thomas in Newport Gwent, are we talking about a poor man's Illuminati? If so, where are the aliens? Keep up the good work. Um, Thank you. Whatever that means. I'm not, I'm not sure what that question means. Okay. Mick Milton Keynes, yeah. what is Brian's view on lawful rebellion? Well, where we're heading to at the moment, and I'll make a statement, I believe this, as an ex-military person, we are heading towards a vicious police state. And at the moment, we know that our politicians are not working for us. We certainly know the House of Lords is not working for us because they are working for profit. And we need to do something to stop the slide into a police state. And lawful rebellion is taking action within the law in order to stop that situation. But it's time people got off their bottoms to do something to shout and stop what is happening. It's very serious what started to happen in this country. Okay, well, that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, I'm going to read you one more text, and then we're going to go back to discussing the, the, the main issue here. Yeah. Um, sorry to text again. I take it this is from the lady who was uh, a nurse uh, working in a hospital. She says, people in the NHS are terrified to speak out, even though money isn't getting to patient care. What can one person do to get others to speak? Well, th this is a very typical comment. We, we get a lot of calls and emails ourselves saying this. Our organisation isn't working, whether it's a university or a hospital or a school. And, and if you speak out about what's actually happening, fraud, corruption, bullying, you get victimised. And what you need to do is join in with other people. So have a look at the um, British Constitution Group, that's the bcgroup.org.uk website, which is d actually talking about lawful rebellion. We had a superb conference in Stoke this Saturday just gone. There was 500 people there and we were talking about the state of the nation. So we talked about what was happening with the constitution, the police state, we talked about common purpose, and we actually talked about child snatching. And I can tell you the response from that audience was fantastic. So don't try and fight it on your own because you get picked off. Join in with other people. And what we have said is that the aim is Definitely no violence. Very, very important this. And what you do has to be inside the law. The government at the moment, in my professional opinion, if I'm allowed to say it like that, the next step is to increase the financial collapse and then they are going to foment violence on the streets. And the, that violence on the streets will be used to trigger the enactment of all of the anti-terrorism legislation and you are going to be in a police state. So the last thing we need is violence and I say this to every audience whether it's to uh, political groups or whether I'm talking to uh, Muslim groups we are all in this together and it's very very important but for that lady get involved with other people learn what other people know and that is the movement. We need to get millions of people in this country mobilised. Do you want to give that uh, website again? Yeah, it's www.thebcgroup, BC is for British Constitution, thebcgroup.org.uk. .org.uk. Yeah. OK, I want to ask you about the Media Standards Trust. Well, I'm... Well, I'm delighted that you've brought that in because I wonder how many of the viewers will know that the Media Standards Trust exists. This is a trust which is set up to ensure the even-handedness of broadcasting. And I mean, we've got a situation today in this country where the mainstream media is just not getting the truth across. We're not told the truth about the EU, we're not told the truth about the rioting that's been happening in European countries, we're not told about the troubles in Iceland. Nobody has explained where Gordon Brown has got 900 billion from. So we know that at the moment the mainstream media is not telling the truth. But Julia Middleton, Chief Executive from Common Purpose, has been instrumental in setting up a Media Standards Trust which is apparently going to help the performance of the media. The only thing is that the office, unless it's moved recently, 
was actually set up inside the common purpose offices. And when you look at the people she's got on her team, they are elitist, including members of the major uh, international banks. So why international banks would like to get involved with the media, I don't know. But I don't think it bodes well. Well, I think I could probably guess. So and, can and I. Talking about mainstream media, obviously uh, we're not quite like those mainstream media. You wouldn't see this show, would you, on the BBC? No, but it's interesting that if you look at the figures of graduates, you'll find that the BBC is riddled with common purpose graduates. In fact, I had a call from a BBC person following one of the, I think she saw the Leicester talk that I did, and she said to me, how many people do I think, do I think were, were common purpose graduates in the BBC? And I said to her, well, probably, probably about 500, four or 500. And she said, I think there's a thousand. Now, if there's a thousand and they've paid 3,500 pounds plus VAT. Of our that, money. That's a lot of viewers' uh, license fees for a charity. Mm. Well. Julia Middleton takes 80 or 90 thousand pounds out of that. She's, I believe, earning that sort of money. But something's wrong. We don't know about this charity. It doesn't want to tell us what it's doing. Authorities don't want to tell us how much they're spending on it. And now they've got their little tentacles into the media. I think this is very sinister. So they can put out statements as the Media Standards Trust and affect what the media is saying. Well, go, go on the internet yourself and look at the Media Standards Trust and look at who's involved with it. And they are all elitist people. It's, it's incredible. They are not there, in my opinion, to actually ensure the openness of media. They're there to make sure that what appears in the media fits their view of society. Okay, well, Jim from Larne, who texted us earlier, I believe, um, Excuse me. says, have you ever asked your MP to raise the common purpose issue in Parliament? Well, I, we've certainly tried the local MPs in the Plymouth area. Which is uh, where you're based. Yeah. Um, Mr Gary Streeter got very hot under the collar and didn't want to say whether he was involved in common purpose or not, although he did eventually send me a letter indicating that he wasn't. But we've got two Labour MPs, Linda Gilroy and Alison Seebeck, um, I'm, I'm going to have to say I believe, because I can't remember which one it is, but certainly one of those two, I believe, is involved with Common Purpose. Okay. So it's no good going to your MP. Well, no, well, I suppose but, not. But right? um, Philip Davis, MP, has been asking questions in Parliament about Common Purpose, and when he discovered the Ministry of De Defence had spent over £400,000, he started to get very interested. Well, they, for their members, for people who work for the Ministry of Defence, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So we do have MPs who've now started to ask the right question, which is, what is this charity doing? Now, we got a clue a little while ago. One of the people involved with Demos is a chap called Jeff Morgan, and he wrote a very interesting, interesting book, which is the invisible hand remaking charities in the 21st century. And what it's suggesting is that charities are to be used for political purposes. And Miliband tried to get a, a bill through Parliament, or in the initial stages, which was for the first time going to make it lawful for charities to be politically involved. Now this is very sinister because there's 170,000 charities registered in UK with a budget of, I believe, £44 billion. Pounds. What happens when those charities start to support a political line? You've got a problem. Yeah, it does seem to be a case, doesn't it? Um, Mickey Milton Keynes says, does Brian feel kids are being dumbed down either with drugs or alcohol? Well, I certainly do, because I believe the whole of our society is under an attack. And I state this very freely. If you go and get a copy of this newspaper, on one particular page, we've actually got a plan of the attack, and you'll see how each area of society... I'll get there in a minute. If I can show that, that's page nine of our latest newspaper. If you can see that, OK? Yeah, I think so. And what it's doing, it's listing the areas of society, it's saying what will be done, and then it's giving a result. And I'll tell you that if you look at families, it's saying that families are to be broken up. And why you do that is if you break the family bond, you then leave the state to claim the children. This is the way it works in communist countries. 
I find it very, very significant that Common Purpose is working very hard at the moment to get in amongst the Muslim communities where the family units are still very strong. And I can prove that because we've got the documentation showing what Common Purpose is trying to do. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier, and uh, I'm not going to let this go in our last five minutes, that yeah. um, children are being taken from their parents. Yeah. As part of this, is this something to do with Common Purpose, actually? Well, I think we need to be very clear here. We know that children are being taken from their parents, and if you look at the front page of the Daily Mail today, it's got a classic example where a lot of people would say those children being taken and given to the wrong parents. What I didn't, but didn't, uh, I had no idea would happen is that the moment we started to print this paper, people would call us with unbelievable stories of their children being taken, and initially you don't believe it, and then you see the evidence.